21 News is bringing you team coverage of the tragedy in Warren from anchor Leslie Barrett and 21 News reporter Lindsay McCoy. We begin with Michelle Nix reporting from Pine Avenue in Warren, the scene of the deadly crash. Michelle? Well, Bob, we're out here at the scene of the crash where the memorial for the victims continues to grow. Teddy bears, flowers, people coming by to pay their respects. But we also have new information tonight. I've learned that the owner of the vehicle from Youngstown had driven his SUV to Federally Avenue in Warren on Saturday night to his sister's home for a gathering or party of sorts. That's where he saw some of the victims. Now, we're told that he stayed overnight. He woke up the next morning to find his car keys he's missing along with the SUV. He would later learn that his sister's roommate, 19-year-old Alexis Kaysen, was driving the vehicle when it crashed, killing six young people, including herself. Tonight, I talked to a survivor who says he repeatedly begged that young woman to slow down. Six young lives tragically cut short when a speeding car crashes into a guardrail, flips over, landing in a pond just before 7 a.m. on Sunday. At least two of the young victims and one survivor are from the same Warren neighborhood, including 15-year-old Kirkland Boehner, his mother and sister overcome with unbearable grief. I just took my brother. Oh, that was your brother? I'm so sorry. I called him all my brothers because they're so close. You don't know the whole pain until it happens to you yourself. But there to comfort Kirkland Boehner's mother and sister, survivor, 18-year-old Brian Henry. He had to use his elbow to break the back window, get out, and run for help. He says eight people had piled into the vehicle, some sitting on each other's laps. They were still alive when he and another survivor ran to get help. They was panicking. I was about to panic, I was about to panic but I couldn't. I had to get help. Henry says he's not sure where the group was coming from. They picked him up minutes before the crash at a friend's house to take him home. He says the 19-year-old driver, Alexis Kaysen, was ping-ponging from one guardrail to the next. She was speeding. I looked at her. I was, I was telling her to slow down the whole time we was in the car. Lisa Williamson, the mother of 14-year-old victim Brandon Murray, says her last words to her son that night, I love you. He had gone to spend the night at victim Ramon White's house, but he wasn't allowed to go anywhere else. They were sneaking to a party, like we have done so many times. And from what I understand, they were trying to get back home before any of our parents, any of the parents woke up. For Lamana and Derek Ray, the parents of 15-year-old victim Daylon Ray, the reality of what's happened still seems like a bad dream. I always thought he would make national news playing sports because he was so gifted and talented in playing sports, but yeah. never nothing like this. Instead, the tragic headline of six young lives, the victims of the worst crash in Trumbull County history and the deadliest in the state of Ohio in the last three years. With more local news, I'm Michelle Nix. There's a changing face of addiction in the valley, and heroin, cheaper and purer than ever, is the drug of choice. I'm surprised I didn't die. I had overdosed two days in a row and woke up in the hospital, and I'm like, oh, that was really good stuff. Let me go get some more. The problem with heroin is once you use it, you're an addict. It doesn't take repeated use. It's not just a phrase that we are throwing out to frighten. Um, this is an epidemic. We are losing people every single day, dying from this disease. This killer addiction, along with prescription pain pills, is claiming lives in record numbers. Trumbull County alone had 15 overdose deaths in a two-month period. The youngest one being 21 years of age and the oldest one being in their 60s. Heroin is a drug that does not discriminate. Every profession, it doesn't matter who you are, police officers, doctors, lawyers, nurses, you know, somebody you know knows somebody who has somebody in their family that's has a drug problem. I never thought that would happen to me. I went to Catholic school. I had a good upbringing. A crackdown on prescription pain meds like Oxycontin forced addicts to turn to the streets, replacing pills with heroin. The illegal drug provides that same initial feeling of euphoria 
and is cheaper and more easily accessible on the streets. A hit of heroin can cost as little as $10. A single 80 milligram Oxycontin pill would sell for $80 on the street. I think it's a number one threat to law enforcement and really society. If you don't think the growing heroin problem affects you, you're wrong. Local police say the addicts are getting younger and the majority of home invasions, robberies and thefts are the result of addicts stealing to feed their addiction. If it's not 100%, it's real damn close. I, I, I can't think of anyone who's done a residential burglary, a retail theft that hasn't been to support their drug habit. I was a hot mess. Alexis Norman, now 20 months sober, at one point was charged with being part of a heroin for burglary ring. But thanks to Mahoning County's drug court, her life is back on track and she has a warning for others. I used to say, oh, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do heroin. I'm never going to stick a needle in my arm. I'm never going to rob somebody. And, you know, all those things I said I would never do, I did do because the addiction just took over. It was so powerful that I needed that drug that I didn't care what I had to do. With more local news, I'm Michelle Nix. A disturbing number in the new war on drugs that has reached epidemic proportions. Three and a half percent of 11th grade students surveyed in Mahoning County admit they've used heroin in April 2012. In part two of her special report, Michelle Nix explores the heroin epidemic and what's being done to combat it. It's an addiction so powerful, people are literally dying for a heroin high. I had accepted the fact that I was going to die junkie. Snorting it, shooting it, and getting strung out on it. Convinced they're unable to function without it because the withdrawals are so debilitating. It's called dope sick. It felt like I had the flu but it wasn't, it was 10 times worse than the flu. It would not go away. I wasn't just sick. It wouldn't go away until I got my next drug. For Alexis Norman, Mahoning County's drug court and task, treatment alternatives to street crimes gave her a second chance and cleared her record of a nonviolent felony charge related to her heroin addiction. And Judge Durkin is amazing. He's compassionate. He cares about the people that are in drug court. There's a lot of people at TAS that saved my life the first time and this time, and I'm so grateful for them. Treatment for heroin and opiate addiction is available in the Valley, but many can't afford it, and inpatient beds are limited to 16 for adult males and 16 for adult females for the entire Tri-County area. There's also help in the way of using medication-assisted therapy, including methadone, controversial to some because of its own addictive qualities. Here at Meridian, um, patients who have a long-term history of uh, heroin use uh, oftentimes come in with severe withdrawal symptoms. Um, if they're given methadone, um, it uh, is used to block the symptoms of withdrawal. Suboxone, like methadone, is also used to minimize withdrawal symptoms in heroin and prescription pain medications. But when it comes to battling this deadly addiction, law enforcement is continually working to cut off the heroin pipeline. But there's always one dealer to pick up where another left off. So prosecutors are now taking the unusual step to prosecute those responsible for heroin deaths. By going after drug dealers who are supplying the drugs that, that lead to overdoses. Um, we've had some success. I know Trumbull County's following our lead in, in doing the same. But one thing is clear, we can't arrest our way out of the problem. That's why education and prevention could be a lifeline. Educate young kids not to be afraid, but to be aware of what can happen, what will happen. With more local news, I'm Michelle Nix. When a Liberty man died in 2007, he left two loves behind, his wife and his love of baseball. But as Michelle Nix and photojournalist Tim Dale explained, those loves have reconnected in a most unusual way, and it's a source of comfort six years after his death. This is a story of love, loss, and hope delivered in a most unusual way. Six years overdue. I just had it in my hand and um, and started to cry. A sign that just maybe there is life after death and a true love that endures. Always. I just feel like it was his way of saying, I'm still here and I'm watching over you. Kathy and Jim Cronk shared a passion for old music and old movies 
They married at the Mill Creek Park Rose Garden surrounded by family and friends. A five-year union filled with love. You didn't find one without the other. A courtship and kinship that seemed to define love. I just feel very fortunate to have had that kind of relationship that most people don't even get near in, in their lifetime. But for Kathy and Jim, what they shared ended far too soon. Jim died from complications in 2007, about a year after undergoing gastric bypass surgery. However, before his death, from his hospital bed, Jim occupied his time writing letters, filling out self-addressed stamped envelopes, seeking autographs from his favorite baseball players to fulfill a love only second to his wife. Jim was passionate about his hobbies, uh, and um, prior to my meeting him, he had uh, always collected baseball cards. Pete Rose, he's got two of them, Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, Autographed baseball cards that continued to find their way home, even after Jim's death. But it's one that arrived most recently, six years after he mailed it, that caught his widow off guard. Her husband's handwriting, something he touched. It really threw me for a loop. I mean, I cried it just over six years later to see... Um, to see these cards come back. It turns out all-star MVP outfielder Dale Murphy gave this Liberty woman a gift without ever realizing it. So he was like, he came back home again. Interestingly, for the couple who met online, it was the written word that was a symbol of love that stood the test of time. Like a message in a bottle, a letter from a lost love has found its way home. For Kathy, it was like Jim was playing their song. It's not for just an hour, just not for just a day, year, not but for just a year, but always. But always. With more local news, I'm Michelle Nix.